So the new um, instructions are for what's called low prep or minimum prep. And in this case, the resident doesn't do anything before pest control shows up. And the pest control technician does an initial inspection and will treat what they find at that time. So if I were to go into a home and discover that there were bed bugs on that, on a mattress, I will use my vacuum cleaner and suck up all those bugs instead of letting them run and hide. That way, we, we simply remove them. And I can treat other places where I see bugs or suspect that there are bugs or eggs. And then <clears throat> I will give my, the client instructions for what needs to be done when I come back in two weeks' time for the follow-up visit. And usually, that's going to be, mean I need to be able to see and access baseboards and corners, including in closets. So I'm going to need to have, be able to get to pull furniture away from the walls, which means I need there needs to be space in the, on the for, to do that. I need for the un underside of the beds to be cleaned out. People throw all sorts of stuff under their beds. Kleenex is the least of it. Um, empty water bottles, empty vodka bottles, um, you know, baseball bats, you name it. Uh, lots of stuff under there. It all has to come out, and almost all of it should be just thrown away because it's probably contaminated with bed bug eggs. If things are of, of high value or you know, personal value, they need to be bagged in, in a Ziploc until they can be treated but most of it should just be thrown out. And what we, if you read online or in the preparation instructions, they often tell you to put all your belongings in plastic garbage bags and seal them up. Well, that doesn't really work because you can't live out of a garbage bag. And you can't see your belongings and you can't be opening them and closing them effectively. And besides, if you put any, if there were bed bugs and the stuff that you put in the bag, they're going to survive treatment and, reinf and reinfest as soon as you start setting back up. What we prefer are the clear plastic bins with the tight-fitting lid. Okay? You can put stuff in them, you can stack them, that means they're easy to move if you need to uh, for cleaning or inspection or for treatment. And if there's bugs in a bin, okay, you'll eventually realize that, and that bin can be treated. So we don't necessarily need to treat all of everybody's stuff. Okay. Um, and that, that, makes, that makes treatment a whole lot easier. Uh, we already talked about most of this, and how they, bugs really like fabric and paper, and will get in between stuff. Um, in general, heat treatment is considered the gold standard. It's, and there are many kinds of heat treatment, and I'll, we'll talk more about that in a minute, um, including cold. Cold is the absence of heat. And uh, so some things that are otherwise very difficult to treat can be frozen. So for instance, if you have a library that gets infested, you can pack all the books in plastic lined boxes and send them to commercial cold storage for a month, and that will kill all the bugs. Um, in every treatment, some pesticide is going to be used. Okay? Uh, we would we routinely recommend uh, dust, uh, insect dusts for this. But pesticide only treatments are going to fail. And when that when the pest control technician shows up with a pressure tank and walks around and sprays and goes away, that's not going to get rid of your bed bugs. Okay. Uh, you need to, have, to do multiple things. You need to vacuum. You need to use a steamer. Uh, we need to use dusts. We need to caulk to exclude. Uh, and all these things together are going to be much more effective than just walking around with, with a canned insecticide, which really which the bug is probably uh, resistant to. Uh, there's something else I need to mention. In addition to all the, all the people that do have bugs, and we know there's you know, a lot of them, 10% of the city, 
But in addition to them, there are people who think they have bugs and don't. That's called delusory infestation. Um, and there's people that, and so I mentioned earlier, we do uh, insect ID. People bring samples, and then we send them up to State College. At this point, about 80% of the samples that are sent to State College for identification don't, not only aren't bed bugs, they're not bugs at all. They're lint, debris, scabs, nose nuggets, you know, you name it. But there's no arthropod matter there, there's no bug. And this is a, there's people who are in even worse shape. They think that they are, uh, have, that they're infested. There are invisible bugs living under their skin. And these people have a serious medical and, and psychological problem that can be almost impossible to, to treat. Uh, when I have to tell somebody that I'm sorry, there's no bugs in that sample, it was lint, they don't want to hear that. And it can be very difficult conversations with people. Um, on the back of your bed bug ID sheet, on the bottom, uh, the last listing is for stoppest.org. And they have a bunch of resources up there, one of them being a really excellent webinar that is by the two of the world experts on this problem. I uh, highly recommend it. Uh, it's really fascinating in a totally gross kind of way. OK, so what are we doing? Well, let's start with what we're not doing. We are not going to use foggers, bug bombs, or other over-the-counter um, uh, chemicals. They simply don't work. The bed bugs, most bed bugs, about 95% of bed bugs at this point, are resistant to the chemicals that you can buy over the counter in the grocery store or the hardware store. So what does work? Well, Dr. Wong's lab has done a whole lot of work. This protocol is based on multifamily housing, but it's readily adaptable to other things as well. Uh, so as with everything with integrated pest management, education is really the first thing you've got to do. You have to educate everybody, all the tenants, all the staff, all the management. Uh, everyone's got to understand what the problem is, what to look for, and how to talk about it, who to talk to. And then what Dr. Wong does is they'll start at the top of a multifamily building and uh, inspect the entire building from top to bottom, every apartment. And this is a very short inspection, no more than five minutes per apartment, and strictly visual. They're not taking anything apart. All they're doing is pulling the sheets back and looking at the, at the bed, inspecting the couch and the recliner, and if they're there. If there's any reason for them to think that there, there are bed bugs, they're going to put in interceptors. And these are very simple to use. You can see right here, you just put the, them under the leg of the bed. So usually it's four, sometimes it's five or six, depending on how many legs the bed has. But, um, and, that's, and then they'll come back in two weeks and see if there's anything in here. There. So here you can see this installed under the bed, and here you can see what can collect in it in just two weeks' time. Now this is a pretty serious infestation, and about half of all these bugs are actually uh, baby cockroaches. Okay. This stuff here... Do they go on the beds, on beds? Yeah, they'll get to, in beds. Yeah. To that degree? Oh, yeah. 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 Um, they don't bite, so you don't notice them. Um, but particularly if people are eating in bed, which disabled folks will do a lot. Yeah, yeah. Um, this sandy substance here, this is what I was talking about. These are those shed skins of the bugs. And it looks sandy because the, it's a trans, the exoskeleton is actually translucent. Um, and it kind of looks grainy. And it's pretty distinctive. Um, once you see it once, you'll always recognize it. But that's a clear sign of, of the presence of bed bugs. And you can see that most of the bugs get caught when they're heading towards the bed. 
because the only way up onto the back of the canal is through this moat, and so they get stuck. Uh, bugs that are coming down the bed looking for new harborage will also get stuck. And as I say, the uh, shed skins will gradually sift down into that as well. Okay, so after the initial inspection, placing the monitors, we're going to come back in uh, two weeks and inspect to launder uh, and do any treatment. So if there are bed bugs, then you're going to have to wash the bedding and other stuff as required. Putting on encasements on both the mattress and the box spring. Okay. So this is a, you can see, if you pull that zipper down, down you'll see, it's a very tiny uh, teeth on the zipper, plus it's got um, a baffle behind it, and then if you, and then usually there's a little uh, widget at the end of the zipper to make sure that they can't crawl out the end. My sample's been manhandled just too many times it's broken off, but um, yeah. So those are, and those should go on, as I said, both the mattress and especially the box spring. Once you put that on, bed bugs can't get in, they can't get out, and they are, um, trapped inside, they can't bite through it, and they will, anybody who's inside will eventually die. So once you put that on, you leave it on for at least a year. Uh, 